Welcome to Scaffold Balancer V3, a beginner-friendly starter kit for prototyping custom liquidity pools and hooks contracts, which comes fully loaded with several turnkey examples that are easy to modify and ready to deploy. But first, let's walk through some of the core concepts and components to give you a better understanding of what's possible. This diagram shows a high-level overview of the life cycle for pool operations. Let's begin by highlighting the different roles that each of the core contracts play. The router serves as the recommended entry point for all pool operations. The vault handles accounting responsibilities and holds all of the tokens. Pools hold no tokens, but instead do the math for calculating the amounts for a given operation. As a developer, you have the flexibility to build on top of existing pool types or create a custom AMM with a novel invariant. Additionally, you also have the option to add a hooks contract, which can execute actions before and or after a pool does math for amount calculations. To get a better understanding, let's take a look at the first example we have prepared. This diagram shows part of a swap lifecycle using a before hook that adjusts the swap fee percentage prior to the vault making an on-swap call to the pool. It's worth noting that there is also a more generic on-before-swap hook available, but it cannot adjust the swap fee like on-compute dynamic swap fee percentage can. Furthermore, we also have after-swap and after-remove liquidity hook examples. But now that you're aware of the core concepts, let's jump into the code to talk about how the deploy scripts have been orchestrated. The first important thing to understand is that each script that deploys a contract should be executed inside the run function of this main deploy script contract so that the export deployments helper function can automate scaffold integrations with the front end. Notice that the default setup deploys mock tokens followed by several pull with hook examples. Let's check out this deploy constant sum pool function, where the first thing to note is that the config for deploying, registering, and initializing the pool are set by helper functions before any transactions are broadcasted. The first contract deployed is the pool factory because we need its address to pass as an argument to the hook contracts constructor. Next, the factory deploys a pool and registers it with the vault using the hooks contract address as one of the arguments for registration. After that, the router is approved using permit2 to allow for this router.initialize call, which as we can see in this diagram triggers the transfer of tokens into the vault, followed by the minting of BPT to the caller. And that caller will be the deployer account that is specified in the .env file. So now we are ready to deploy the contracts to a local anvil fork of Sepolia by running yarn fork in one terminal and then yarn deploy in a second terminal. Once the on-chain execution is successful, you can run yarn start and navigate to localhost 3000 in the browser. Now, when you go to connect a wallet, I recommend choosing the burner wallet option because it will allow you to instantly sign transactions without having to click through a browser extension. Now let's head over to the pools page where we can select one of the pools we just deployed to see all of the pool composition and pool configuration details. But the most exciting feature of this front end is actually the pool operations component, which allows you to add liquidity, remove liquidity, and swap. Now, notice that the UI is showing that we have no balance for either token. That is because the burner wallet is just a randomly generated private key that the browser keeps in local storage. Fortunately, this friendly notification allows us to mint 100 of each mock token. Now let's test out a swap with a token in amount of 10, which starts with a query to get the expected amount out which is nearly the same as the amount we are putting in because this is the constant sum pool, which uses an invariant of x plus y equals k. And the reason it's 9.9 .9 instead of 10 is due to the 1% static swap fee percentage, which remember can be altered by a hook, but do beware that not all queries involving pools that use hooks will be 100% accurate because the balancer SDK that fetches these results is still under active development. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and approve the router to spend our token in and then execute the swap, which instantly updates the pool composition and shows us the actual amount out. Next, let's test out adding liquidity by checking some tokens into the pool, 
and observing that both my liquidity and the pool's composition have been updated. And then finally, let's go ahead and remove liquidity by selecting our full balance, approving the router to spend our BPT, and executing the transaction, which again instantly updates the user interface. And now we encourage you to explore the other examples on your own to get a better sense of how the pool math can influence the amounts for each operation. Additionally, be sure to check out the hooks page to see a curated list of all our favorite hooks. Also, stop by the debug contracts page, which is a great place to interact with all of the read and write functions for each contract. And with that, we thank you for watching and wish you good luck building on Balancer.